everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today I want to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, which is cleaner living, getting toxins and um, GMOs and uh, other substances, preservatives out of our bodies and our food and uh, our homes so that we live in, a, in an environment that is a lot closer to the way God intended us to live before man started interfering with all his little chemicals. Um, as you may or may not know, I do have a sensitivity to corn, and so I've done a bit of research on um, GMOs, GMO corn in particular, where it is and how to get how to get to how to how to know where it is because a lot of sources of GMO corn are hidden in our foods and our personal products. Forgive the fact that I'm wearing glasses because I've made notes. And I wanted to um, read these to you because I wanted to make sure that I didn't skip over or forget anything. All right, so let's get started. GMOs, as you may or may not know, came on the scene in the early 90s. They quickly became controversial because there wasn't a lot of testing done before they were incorporated into the food supply. And the testing that was done was um, had some results that were, were less than what the manufacturers of GMO corn seed wanted. Um, and as a result, the, uh, the FDA sort of pushed those results aside and GMOs were allowed to enter the uh, food supply with a minimal amount of testing. So that's where we are today. We still, um, they still haven't been tested as far as long-term health effects on uh, humans. And um, some people really want to avoid GMOs as a, because of that. So that's where um, I have put together these three tips to help you um, avoid hidden GMOs that are in our food supply and our personal products and our home and our uh, home cleaning supplies as well. So the USDA has mandated that all dairy that is not full fat be fortified with vitamins D and or A. Uh, there's no way that dairy producers can get around this and so they've sort of turned it into a marketing tool where it's great to have your your um, your dairy and uh, fortified with vitamins it's healthy for you and the makers of non-dairy nut milk products have also you know gone along for the ride they are also fortifying their um, almonds and soys and you know all these various nut milks vitamin D is of is an oil soluble vitamin the only way you can get it into a product that is water-based or ha doesn't have a lot of fat is by using a carrier oil. The only available fortification package uses corn oil as the carrier oil. Additionally, there are um, some other corn derivatives included in that package like propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is a corn derivative that is used in antifreeze. It can also contain other additives like polysorbates, which again is a corn derivative. The method is used to fortify dairy milk and nut milk, traditional and organic. That's right, there is probable GMO corn oil, propylene glycol, polysorbates, in organic milk. Now, please go to <laughs> Google, call your call your um, purveyors of organic uh, milk, and ask them. You know, ask them: Are they are they fortifying with corn oil? Is this corn oil GMO? Because that's the only way you can be sure. I've done. I've I've questioned. I've found out. But I want you to do the same. Don't take my word for it. So any milk, to reiterate, any milk that has been fortified with vitamins, D, A, whatever, probably contains GMO, corn, polysorbates, propylene glycol. So how do you avoid it? <laughs> you can buy full fat milk that has not been uh, fortified. You can buy full fat yogurts that have not been fortified. Um, there are two dairies in my particular, usually you'll, you'll be able to find this um, at local dairies. Uh, in, I live in Los Angeles and there are two dairies here in California that uh, offer full fat unfortified milk. One is, I'll put the names down below because 
Lord knows I cannot prompt pronounce this first company. It's Brugieri's, I think, and Strauss Dairy is the other one, and I'll link them below. You can also buy unenriched nut milk, and I have some brands here. I'll link those below also that offer unenriched nut milk. Eden Blend, Imagine, and West Soy are three um, brands that offer unenriched nut milk. So I'll, again, link that information below. There's also coconut, purveyors of coconut milk that offer unenriched coconut milks. Blue Mountain, Grace are two that come to mind, but I'll list those below as well. The second thing I want to talk to you about is citric acid. Don't be fooled by the name. Citric acid is not made from citrus. It's actually made by growing um, mold, Aspergillus niger, mold on corn syrup. It is then treated with lime to make it even more acidic and um, is used to preserve meats and um, anything that's in packages. You'll pretty much see citric acid listed on it as a preservative. It's used at, citric acid is used as an acidifier, a preservative, an emulsifier, and a chelating agent. According to the site understandingfoodadditives.org, over 300,000 tons of it is used in foods and beverages annually. However, over a million tons is produced each year and it's used in everything from personal care products, soaps, uh, and household cleaning products to pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. Virtually everything that comes in contact with your mouth contains corn-derived citric acid. Now you do the math as far as how much GMO corn is available on the market compared to how much non-GMO corn is available on the market and it's pretty easy to figure out that the vast majority of the corn that is used to make citric acid is made from GMO corn. The USDA allows citric acid to be used uh, to, as a preservative in organic as well as conventional products. That's right. Um, I actually got an email. I sent an email to um, a large uh, producer of organic poultry as well as other meats that's found in your better, um, whole, you know, your better foods markets, um, your better food markets and uh, they did confirm that yes they do use citric acid to package their their poultry as well as clean their poultry and that the um, arm of the USDA that that uh, con that certifies organic producers allows this not going to use any names but it should be pretty easy to figure out so when you go into a, a grocery store for example um, and you buy a package of meat that's sitting on a soaker pad, those soaker pads are soaked in citric acid. Vegetables, when you go to a conventional grocery store and you, you know, buy fresh lettuce, particularly bag lettuces that have been pre-washed, they've been pre-washed in citric acid. Um, vegetables that are sitting on, um, you know, that have been washed that are sitting out, like lettuces and anything that, basically any vegetable that's been washed has been washed in citric acid. Um, tomatoes and potatoes are gassed with something called ethylene gas. This is another corn derivative product. Um, additionally, when you look on packages, you'll see um, citric acid over and over again used at, uh, as one of the ingredients in um, packaged foods. If you check your toothpastes, your lotions, your um, facial products, you'll also again see citric and you see citric acid on the label don't be surprised again um, is all the citric acid on the market GMO probably not all of it but the vast majority of it is a GMO it's a GMO corn derivative okay so how do you avoid it avoid anything that says preservatives on the label um, there are brands of meats that, uh, for example, Trader Joe's offers some meats that say, uh, bacon, for example, that says no nitrates, no preservatives on the label. 
If it doesn't say no preservatives on the label and you're buying bacon or any kind of packaged meat, it has preservatives in it. If it's sitting on a soaker pad, it's got preservatives, it's got citric acid in it. So here's what I do. I buy my vegetables from local farmers markets. Um, I buy my vegetables from um, grocers where it does not say that it's been washed. For example, sometimes you'll, you'll see on mushroom packages, pre-washed, that's a big no-no. Anything that's been, that says it's been washed on there is a no-no. But there are, you know, some makers of, some producers of raspberries, berry products that don't wash their berries because it, you know, breaks them down. I'll list below a, cor a couple of brands of meats that uh, do not use preservatives um, and I will buy those in the store. Otherwise I get my meat from um, a local butcher that says on his counter no preservatives <laughs> used. Um, it happens to be a halal butcher um, and their religion does not allow them to use preservatives but there are lots of local butchers uh, that don't uh, wash their you know that don't process their meats with preservatives um, so look for those uh, let's see Applegate Farms is a brand for example that does not use preservatives in the processing of their meat so it can be done it just takes a little bit of effort but again farmers markets are your friends um, so if you have access to any farmers markets the, the vegetables there are much more nutritious because they're right out of the earth that day um, and they taste so much better than what you would normally find in conventional grocery stores. So if you have a farmer's market near you, by all means, you know, please use them. So the third thing that I want to talk about today is ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C, which you find in supplements and added to, you know, in, to vitamin enriched um, products as well. 90% of the ascorbic acid on the market today is made from GMO corn. It is synthesized in a lab uh, using corn syrup. <laughs> synthesized ascorbic acid is a, a version of vitamin C that's really not found anywhere else in nature and it doesn't react in the body the same as natural vitamin C. So it's prevalent in vitamin C. You'll see it mostly in vitamin C supplements, and you'll also see it as preservative used in prepackaged foods, um, as well as beauty and personal care products, especially those with um, those of uh, vitamin C serums that we all love. Um, those are most likely a GMO. So, how do you avoid ascorbic acid? Okay, so naturally occurring vitamin C is more effective than synthetic vitamin C you don't so you don't need as much of it and we're starting to see studies coming out now that are showing negative effects by getting too much of the synthetic type of vitamin C just so just be aware if you're you know if you're supplementing with vitamin C look for a supplement that sources whole foods as the their source for vitamin C like um, raspberries, uh, you know, strawberries or citrus as their vitamin C source. Additionally, um, I use a product that uh, sources, actually I use a product that offers hypoallergenic vitamin C. It's corn free vitamin C. Don't know exactly what their source of it is, but um, I'm going with no corn <laughs> because I really need vitamin C to, uh, for my immune system to um, help regulate and normalize my immune response. Avoid any packaged or personal care products with ascorbic acid on the label. I use marula oil and rosehip seed oil for my anti-aging serums because they're both loaded with natural vitamin C. In fact, um, the people of um, Africa, which is where marula oil is sourced, it's it uh, comes from a nut from a tree that's grown in um, South and I think Eastern Africa. Anyway, the people where uh, it's in that, that are indigenous to where marula oil naturally occurs use it as a preservative in foods because it is so loaded with vitamin C. So you can eat it as well as put it on your skin. 
Look for beauty products that source their vitamin C from natural sources like Camu Camu, Acerola, and Amla Berries, as well as more less exotic um, sources like raspberry and blueberry blends. All right, I think that that is it. Please, if you have gotten anything from this video, if you uh, found this information helpful, like me, like this video, like me, yeah, like me too, <laughs> like this video um, so I'll know and I will continue um, offering some more suggestions along these same lines about living a cleaner, uh, less toxic lifestyle. Well, that's it for the day. I'll let you uh, get back to what you were doing. I'm going to go make myself some lunch. Have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon.